Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Room. You might be wondering, why the hell am I looking at the F-104? Because I've showed this starfighter design multiple times. Well, it's to show you the similarities between this and another design, because today I have a U-2 with me, and you might notice they have the same fuselage. The primary difference is a slight variation in the tail. It's not 100% accurate, but it's good enough for me. Another way in which it's not 100% accurate is the fact that it has uh, landing gear on the wings that are permanent fixtures rather than something that falls off during launch and has to uh, be restored on landing. Yes, the real thing has bicycle landing gear with no supports whatsoever, but I decided that was just a little too unstable for me when I made this version. I'd like to thank Nene, who told me to make it. She forced me to. And um, yeah, the, the U-2 actually has the same fuselage. I mean, I already just said that, but it has the same fuselage as the F-104. It just has different landing gear to save weight and um, much bigger wings, and it's designed to glide. Also, I think I'm, I'm like very certain it has a different engine too, but uh, I would have had to ruin the entire tail on this to, to swap out the engine. So of course, I left that engine alone. It also means that this thing goes faster than it should, but that doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that it is fun to fly. And she is indeed fun to fly, although... Oh yes, I, I had the brakes on because I had to make it morning. And, um, yeah, so here we are taking off from the desert runway because, well, I kind of crowded the, the KSC. I believe I have some other planes to show off. I don't remember exactly. I'm kind of just doing this one by the seat of my pants. Uh, you can see I've also crashed some things out here, and in fact I crashed a U-2, uh, more northerly on this planet, uh, somewhat up there. Actually, it's not showing on the map, probably because I'm not showing debris. Uh, oh, it's, it's not showing at all. There, there was debris up here. I, I crashed one up here by this river, but, uh, oops, I've gone off the runway, and as you can see, she's just fine with, uh, overrunning the runway, and in fact, we've taken off regardless, and, um, we're ascending, so you know what? I'm gonna just take my hands off the controls entirely and see how far we get, because I'm, I'm genuinely curious now if we will crash horrifyingly into the desert or if we will actually manage to, uh, take off from this. Right now it's looking like crash horribly into the desert simply because the terrain is coming up to meet us very slowly, very steadily. Mm, it's hard to say. I think we're going to clip that hill in the distance because, see, we're, we're going up right now, but, um, and of course the cockpit is angled down slightly, so its direct frontal view is not quite correct, but trying to look as straight forward into my flight path as possible has me pretty much intersecting with the ground over there. Although, we do also have lift helping out, but uh, will it be enough? We are going down, now we're going up, now we're going down again. That is the way of things. And yes, we are going way too fast for Real U2. And it looks like, indeed, we are about to... Actually, we're going to clear it. Holy shit! And it's not even going to be that close. See, there's our shadow. Still a good distance away. Blurring out, going into the distance further. Well, in that case, it's time to pull up. As hard as I can. Aw, I didn't even knock them out. What are you, a pilot? Are you actually a pilot? Yeah, you're a pilot. Yeah, um, I'm so used to using just random scientists and engineers because I killed all my pilots. So, yeah. And uh, the profile of the wing. Yeah, it was hard to get something approximating the correct wing profile. And uh, I did a lot of minorly uh, terrible glitching. Um, I did also make the ailerons clip into the wing slightly, in a slightly strange way. So it's not my best job in terms of, well, pretty much anything, to be honest. But I do enjoy this design very much. I do enjoy the way she performs. I enjoy the way she looks. And most importantly, I enjoy the fact that a friend convinced me to, um, you know, just, just, just make more replicas, make more things. And um, there's some other stuff that I'm really excited to show in a future video, as well as the other plane that I'm going to show off today, um, that are all inspired by that kind of development, basically. And oh, there's just something beautiful about a U-2 just flying high above the atmosphere. I'm not really high above the atmosphere right now, though, so we, we need to go higher for that. But uh, we would also be burning if we continued at this throttle, so clearly we need to throttle it down because we, we shouldn't be burning. A U-2 does not burn. 
it does not go supremely fast, it just goes supremely high. It suddenly occurs to me that a great parody of this would be to make a replica of the band U2 and say, look at my beautiful U2 replica. But uh, I'm not that skilled. I couldn't replicate people with the parts in this game, though I'm sure there are other designers and creators who can. I can just do planes, sort of, mostly, kind of. And, um, oh look, we're about to leave the desert. And uh, we're nearly 20 kilometers up. I'm not quite sure how that scales to real Earth, but um, I don't mind either way. I'm quite happy with how high and how fast we are going. Um, that said, you know what? Fuck it. Let's full throttle it. Because why not? I'm sure we can... Yep, we can get the speed to start increasing again. And I'm going to dip the nose slightly. I uh, probably didn't want to dip the nose quite as much as I just did, because we are going to start descending slightly. But uh, we should make up for that with a bit of additional speed as we continue around the globe. And sure enough, this is the appropriate look from a U2, though, because we can see the blackness of space, all the atmosphere far below us, and a giant wing and tank. Uh, the very first U2s didn't actually have these wing tanks, but now all of them do. And um, they're actually still in use, or at least... Uh, very recently are still in use. I, I'm not quite sure. Um, and also, they actually put scientific payloads, or uh, spy payloads, I don't know. Uh, they, pr they, they, they don't really use it for spying so much anymore. As far as I'm aware, they just use it for science. Uh, because satellites are far more effective and can't be shot down or crash as much. But uh, yeah, these actually have the capability to carry payload in them. Uh, that reminds me, something else that's absolutely insane related to another video I did recently. Um, I believe it was the XB-51. Um, there was a prototype uh, passenger carrying system with that. I think it was the XB- you know what? No, it was not the XB-51. It was another plane, I believe, that I have made a replica of, but I have not shown yet. And I'm not sure what that plane was just yet. But uh, we'll find out pretty soon, because I will be making a video of it, maybe in this very recording session. I don't know. In any case, this is a U-2. I've used about a sixth of its fuel? That's not a sixth. That's more like a fourth? I'm an idiot. That's a fifth. It's a fifth. It's clearly a fifth. It's 40 out of 50, and it drains evenly from every tank, so that that's literally a fifth. Um, not quite a fifth, although I can make it exactly a fifth by cutting the throttle right now. 22 kilometers seems like a fairly good height to go to. We're going to go ahead and start dropping down. You may have heard my phone telling me that I need to take my meds. Because, um, uh, so, you know, when videos are delayed like this one, um, it's, it's usually because of depression and um, emotional abuse from my father, who I live with. And I hate to get all serious and dark on you, but that, that's a that's a real problem that I'm living with, and it sucks. And I want to get out of here, but I don't have any money, because I'm kind of worthless. And I'm kind of, well, because I feel depressed all the time. It makes it hard to do pretty much anything, including just making these videos, which are a lot of fun. But, you know, it's, it's a problem. You can probably hear me opening medication bottles in the background. If you can... Uh, that, that's because I am. I need to take my meds, and what better time than in the middle of a recording while falling towards the planet? Ooh, look, a river. Sorry, I got distracted by the river? There's a river. Obviously, we have to turn and go towards the river in the game because it's a river. Hold on, hold on. Let's aim forwards. Um, I kind of wish I had my joystick plugged in right now because I could control this far smoother with a joystick than I can by mashing keys randomly. Because I could very smoothly and softly control. I could stroke the controls comfortably. That doesn't sound in it uh, bad at all, does it? I don't know. But um, I'm going to try and make it over to that river. It's going to take a little while. I'm going to just kind of relax and gently go. Um, the thing is, I don't want to turn the engine back on. Because uh, we, we, um, we saved quite a bit of... Let's just go ahead and pull up just... A little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Mm. Eh, we'll leave it there for now. And um, I just want to see, let's see, did I manage to keep it? Yes, I kept it above 20%. Tw <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, I kept it above 20%. So uh, we have used 20% of our fuel. I just remembered. So um, you might notice this fuel gauge says that I've used significantly more than 20%. That's because uh, not every tank on this plane starts full. For instance, this one is empty. So I thought that one was, but it's not. Okay. Um, I believe that's the only one that's that starts um, not completely filled, and that's for weight balancing purposes. But every other tank is completely filled when it starts, so you can look at the ratio of any particular tank to see what kind of uh, level of use we're talking about. And um, you can't really see that with the with the total value because the total value is based on a theoretical full plane that this will never be unless you're using uh what is it kerbal construction time and like that recovery system and refueling system and that which refuels all the tanks because it doesn't know the difference between a tank that's not supposed to be filled and not um i'm mildly rambling about that because i was playing a career mode with that and i um that that it didn't cause a disastrous problem, but it did cause a slight problem in that I was flying around planes with monoprop in them that wasn't supposed to be there. Thankfully, there is the new fuel drain valve uh, part in KSP 1.9 point whatever, and therefore I could just, you know, add that to future designs, and any time they overfuel or fuel what it's not supposed to be, I could just drain it out. Of course, that wastes uh, in-game cash, but... Uh, I mean, I suck at the game anyhow. I I actually do. Like, the career mode? I, I actually really suck at it. I'm I'm not, like, it's just, it's too meticulous. Like, it requires more focus than I want to give it. And I'm just looking at the map because I was curious how much farther that little bit of river goes. And I just hit the wrong button to leave the map. Oh, it really does end right there. I, I, I was I had that just out of frame, but I wasn't sure if I could actually see the end of it from here. So I figured I'd, you know, look from the map view. It's a much more sensible thing to do, or at least that's how I felt at the moment. Beautiful, beautiful. We're actually getting the majority of our lift from these central wing bits. Kind of makes sense. They are the biggest uh, wing, single wing piece on here. It's also always interesting to me to see how the yaw, the uh, vertical stabilizers tend to have this counterbalance and it's kind of a similar thing with the elevators typically um, not necessarily with the front of the elevator and the back but at least between the elevator and the wing the elevators will always be pushing down while the wing is pushing up I mean that's just kind of how it works and also I just turned off my SAS for no reason that was dumb of me I didn't mean to do that we do need to descend a little bit faster though because um What's the word I'm talking about? Uh, I was using about a quarter of my entire pitch authority just to keep the nose up, which is not great for coming in for a landing because I might need more than a quarter, or excuse me, well, yeah, a quarter of my pitch authority, half of my up authority, but uh, a quarter of the total authority. Of course, now we're uh, we're pulling more speed than we really need, so I'm pitching back up a little bit more and gosh this plane's just lovely to fly although like i said i did crash one here well not here exactly but up in this relative area not too long ago because i didn't realize just how um delicately you have to land with this design because of the way the nose is pitched down it's actually fairly prone to destroying the nose if you're not careful so that is one thing to be warned of. I figured with the uh, with the quad landing gear, essentially, of having a bipod plus stabilizers, that it wouldn't be a problem. But also, it comes to it comes to my attention, thinking about it just now, that the uh, the front of this uh, bicycle landing gear is very close to center mass. This is very uh, fairly maneuverable, which is why you saw me comfortably just uh, ditch. Um, quite a bit of speed, quite a bit of vertical speed as I was coming in there because I noticed that I was coming close to hitting the ground and that would not have been desirable to hit the ground right at that moment. Ooh. Speaking of which, of, I did it again, although that time I was a little more stressed than I intended to be. Ooh, there was a momentary lag spike there. I hope that wasn't completely broken. 
and again. Wow, normally I don't normally I don't run into that much of an issue with that. And we are safely down for the most part. We are going to come off the ground or nearly come off the ground as we go over that hill though. And slowly come to a stop. That nose does dip quite a bit lower to the ground than I realized it would. But uh, yeah, we have safely landed the U-2, and now it's time to check out an SR-72. And I almost called it an SR-71. Now I'm confused. I actually forgot which one is which, because which one's the real thing, because... Um, yeah, it's supposed to be an SR-71. Why the hell did I have SR-72? That... wait. What? Well, Lockheed Martin SR-72 is an American hypersonic UAV concept. Oh, that's fascinating! I did not know this existed! Well then, in, in any case, this uh, SR-71 Nene edition is named such because, again, Nene made me make it, and because Nene made me make it with the center of mass further from the... Oh, you know what it is? It's fueled right now. So while it's fueled, while it's fully fueled, the center of mass is very close to the center of lift. However, when the fuel runs out, the center of mass drags forward quite a bit. But it flies okay, a bit like a drunken bird, but okay, even when that happens. So uh, that is the name it got because I was not happy with this, but she was fine with it and uh, she made me do it anyhow. So yeah, I um, it's a very basic replica. It's not supposed to be super accurate, but it is fairly accurate. My phone just told me to take my medication again because I forgot to tell it that I already did. And you just heard me unplug my phone. Good job, me. Windows sounds randomly. And I'm going to open up the cargo bay to show... Oh, good. Nothing is clipping in there. I thought for a moment maybe something was. But yes, I used a little bit of these um, Elevon ones to kind of extend the flange forwards, which I'm quite happy with. This is a very basic rough shot. It's not supposed to be hyper perfect or realistic or whatever but it was fun to make and it just occurred to me I completely forgot I wanted to ever so slightly angle these down because that's that's how you do oh dear why is it not okay there we go ever so slightly angled down yeah that seems like a, a reasonable amount and I'm gonna pitch I'm gonna I moved it up vertically because it was z, not z fighting but clipping in a way that I felt was rather hideous and I think it might be mm, no it is not worth adjusting the rearward engines I thought it was for a moment but I changed my mind and I need to save this again as I've just modified it do I have any action groups no I do not good 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 here we go full throttle engage the engines and they're a lot louder because there's two of them who would have guessed and it didn't get any quieter in the cockpit. I thought it might actually. I was hoping it would. But yes, an SR-71. I'm quite happy with this design. Uh, you do need to be careful of tail strikes on liftoff because it does have the rear landing gear rather far forward, which is appropriate for what it is a replica of. The landing gear are quite far forward like that in the real thing, so it does make sense. I think we actually have more fuel. Yeah, we definitely. I was... Of course we have. We have more fuel on board than... Why do I do that? We, we don't need that. We have more fuel on board than we did with the U2 because these fuselage pieces carry quite a bit more. Even this one up front does. This, I believe, yes, carries more fuel. Not any oxidizer. We don't need it, of course. And, of course, there's a bit of fuel in the outboards as well. This one actually carries all the liquid fuel it possibly could carry, so this gauge is accurate as well as looking at any particular tank to get an estimate of how much fuel usage you have. And as you can see, I'm, uh, I'm taking quite a steep ascent. I don't know what the real thing ascends like. Uh, another important thing about the real thing is that uh, you actually can't... Well, I mean, you could take off with it fully fueled, but they never do that because it was a terrible idea. The thing leaks fuel like a sieve on the ground. Um, that's a little bit of an exaggeration. Basically, the standard for an SR-71 on the ground is if it's dripping fuel, eh, it's fine. But if there's like a steady leak, like like pouring, then you gotta fix whatever's, uh, whatever seal isn't quite sealing. And um, you would take off with a minimal fuel load 
and then go refuel in midair after the fuselage has heated up a little and started sealing some of the leaks, because that's how insane this plane was. You really should, if you haven't researched the SR-71, you really should. It's it's a fascinating plane. And I've, I've accidentally gone, I believe, too much into a zoom climb and not really aligned myself properly for supersonic flight. Although, that said, I seem to have come down from that uh, arc fairly well. And I'm going to try to keep us leveled at about a 5 degree uh, angle of attack. See how that does? We are dropping altitude ever so slightly, but we should also start picking up speed, and that should help quite a bit. Mmm, pretty, pretty indicators. Again, the biggest piece of the wing is, of course, showing up as the biggest source of lift, because of course it is! And uh, you can see how much these little elevons do actually indeed help with the lift. It wouldn't have enough forward without them. And of course, it does have body lift, both because these parts are specifically designed to give you body lift and just because, well, the game actually does give you some body lift. Uh, I can't really demonstrate that if I... Oh wait, I can actually a little bit. See this little teal vector right here? Or if I go inside of this fuel tank, you can see this one has a teal vector. Basically, the teal vectors are uh, body lift from any part that is not a wing or a Mark II, which has an actual lift vector. They're, they're wings! The Mark II parts are wings, even though they aren't wings. And surprisingly, we've only used about... Oh, let me do the math here. I can't really. I'm, I'm, I'm actually very much not succeeding at doing this math in my head right now. We've used uh, a half of a... We've used an eighth of our fuel so far. Uh, just about. Which is not bad, considering uh, we're now getting into the... Oh, dear. I, uh... Oh, okay. We're okay. I, I pulled the nose down slightly more than I intended to just then, but uh, we're still accelerating. We're still getting in the groove, so to speak, and uh, what's that? F-15 debris. Uh, well, that kind of reveals something else that I'm working on. Uh, yeah, there's an F-15, and there's the U-2 we landed earlier today, earlier in this video. And that's the X-plane stuff. I have I have a lot of junk going on. Just, just, just ignore the lot of it. You're safer that way. Because, I mean, look at this. You got a White Hawk debris splashed down here. You got a KV-8. You got a KV... I can't speak. Uh, some other stuff. Yeah, just lots of things. Inside the planets, even. I said lying. Because uh, there's, there's nothing inside the planet. Well, actually, I think some stuff is glitched inside the planets. But in any case, I'm rambling because I have nothing better to do. Really. I, I have nothing better to do. I am a rambly bitch. But, uh, yeah. As you can see, hyper effective. I'm sad that these aren't real. I remember when I first saw these, when they first added the Mark II parts. And I was super excited because I thought they were going to be real. But they're not. That would have been awesome. Actual MFDs? I know there's a mod that does that. Uh, Raster Pop Monitor, I believe. But, uh... I also like to do things stock, and yes, I let my plane, I let this SR-71 go a bit too high, and uh, we lost some speed, and we're going to continue to lose speed, and we're going to we're going to start losing altitude fairly soon. But um, I'm not super worried about that. I think I've done enough of a demonstration of this thing as a high altitude craft. Now it's time to do something rather stupid, uh, and I'm going to show the aerodynamic forces overlay simply so I can show you. The body lift. See the teal sticking out on these nacelles? It only really shows up at extreme angles of attack because body lift is a very uh, relatively inefficient aerodynamic mechanism. It is a real mechanism, though. Um, I'm actually going to turn off these engines, or at least turn them down, because uh, else I will kill these Kerbals. I really will, especially pulling straight down towards the ground like this. Actually, I'm going to cut them entirely at this point because I'm probably going to have to roll out of this dive because if I don't, I will most certainly kill them by them, um, well, face planting into the ground essentially because going way too fast. Hey, is that the F-15? It is the F-15. Should we go land by it? 
I think we should. Actually, it's a whole 20 kilometers away. That's like forever. No, it's not. Especially when you have an SR-71. Haha! Uh, actually, we probably don't need to turn the engines on quite that insane, but... Uh... Landing from the cockpit in this is a really, really terrible idea. I just, I just want to stress that now. I don't intend to do it, but I am in here right now, so... I figured it's a good idea to go ahead and mention it. Hey, how are we doing on our... Uh, no, that's vertical speed. Where's our radar altitude? Ah, there we go. Okay. Good, good, good. I'm actually going to go back outside the plane, because... Uh, that's just how I feel more comfortable flying it right now. And, in my opinion, makes for a better video, obviously. But uh, Actually, I'm going to cut the engines entirely at this point. We're going to need to kill some of the speed, preferably not with our necks into the ground. Mm, it's a little bit hilly here. It's probably what killed the uh, F-15, to be honest. Alright. Probably going to do... yeah, we're going to give them a low pass. What's left of it in any case. Yeah, that's definitely a wreck. Um, I believe the uh, there was one pilot in that. They were in the front seat, and they died while the rear seat is still there, which is why it shows as a purple, ooh, ooh, purple, um, you know, target. Even though it's actually got no one on board, and is not alive. I'm also just going to yaw as hard as I can. <laughs> that was fun. Here I'm drifting an SR-71. Drift. Oh, that was beautiful. That's more effective than braking. <laughs> How fucked up is the physics if it's more effective to drift your way to a stop than to, than to land properly? Ah, well, in any case, thanks for watching. As always, here's a plane.